Hey, good afternoon. Welcome back to another episode of Chopping Up with the Doc. Uh, I'm just here today. Um, coming to talk to you a little bit about, we're going to talk about allergies today. Um, allergy season is a punish. You know, lots of questions out there. A lot of people suffering. I don't, you know, I don't know if it, you know, it's been the climate, you know, that's been a little bit um, abnormal, um, you know, from the winter and, you know, to the current, you know, to the current times. Um, but, you know, people are suffering, you know, and a lot of times, you know, I guess people just are having a difficult time with just understanding just um, basically the whole allergy process. So, you know, I suffer from them, you know, all my children suffer from them and man, all day long, you know, I'm bombarded by questions regarding their allergies, so to speak. You know, the, well, there are two types of just basic allergies, you know, in the community. One is food, uh, the other is environmental. Food allergies, you know, basically you're going to be allergic to certain proteins or chemicals inside the foods that you eat. Um, babies can have, you know, milk allergies. Um, you want to try to avoid giving them things like peanuts and, you know, peanut based products until they're at least six months old. I would, the longer you wait, probably the better, you know, basically, you know, just basically some of the common symptoms associated with food allergies are going to be, you know, itching, um, vomiting, um, diarrhea, uh, you know, especially with milk allergies, allergies, I don't know if you've ever noticed, um, just um, itching around the, the rectal area, burning around the rectal area, burning and tingling around the lips, um, in the mouth, um, feeling like you're having difficulty swallowing. Other symptoms can be like reflux, you know, all those types of things are concerned, you know, you have to concern yourself whether or not you have a food allergy or not. You know, I mentioned milk, you know, I mentioned peanuts, you know, people have allergies to eggs, you know, soy products, fish, wheat, shellfish. Those are pretty much the most common allergies that you see. I've actually met people in the past that were allergic to red dyes. They didn't know. So, you know, things like ketchups and, you know, barbecue sauces and hot sauces, uh, things like that that had just the color red in them, you know, they had to pretty much eliminate, you know, from their diets. And, you know, it's, it's difficult, especially with food allergies, to determine, you know, what you're allergic to, you know, and, you know, with, with little people, babies, children, you know, the way we introduce their diets or you're supposed to introduce regular food to them is that you basically are supposed to give them maybe one thing to eat. For instance, you start out with maybe um, a cereal, whether it be a rice cereal or an oats, or oat ba oatmeal based cereal, and you allow them to eat that pretty much every day. Okay. And you see how they respond to the cereal. They don't have any issues with their bowel movements, you know, blood in their stool, which would indicate they have some type of colitis or inflammation in their bowel system, um, colicky, vomiting, those types of things, you know, rashes that may break out. If they seem to tolerate that without any difficulty, then you can introduce the next type of cereal, you know, you want to introduce one thing at a time with, you know, infants, of course, you know, and basically, as you see, they're able to tolerate that particular food, then you add something new, you add something new. And when you see that there's a change, you know, basically, the best thing to do is take the, th the last thing that you introduced away okay and you shouldn't have any problems with the things that you had already introduced unless 
unfortunately, you miss something. Now, you know, for adults, it's, you know, they've already been through that process, you know, you know, bigger people, you know, so they, their diets are pretty much, um, you know, spread out all over the place. They eat pretty much anything and everything. You know, the, I noticed after eating a certain thing that I started itching. I said to myself, I said, I can't eat that anymore. You know, I was like, wow, that's, that's interesting. I, I was fine. I ate this. And then I started itching and that's how often that that's how quickly it, it can occur. It can occur within minutes after eating something you, you, you experience a reaction on your skin um, or, you know, a little, we call it itching or pruritus. Um, you know, you want to, if you notice those types of things, then you got to say, you know what, I'm going to eliminate this from my diet. You know, and a lot of times the things that you see that you need to eliminate are those things that a lot of processed things, especially, you know, and unfortunately, you know, I think I had a processed sandwich and that processed sandwich made me itch. I don't eat a lot of that stuff, but, you know, when you get hungry, you eat what you have. And I think that, you know, gave me a reaction and it could happen with anyone. So the thing is, when you start to see these types of changes after eating, you know, the, the best treatment is just eliminating it from your diet. Okay, for whatever reason, your body doesn't like it. Okay, so if you don't want to have those types of reactions, you have to eliminate it from your diet. Now, there are some things that, you know, hey, some people are just never going to give up. You know, if you're allergic to chocolate, if you like chocolate, that's going to be a problem. If you're allergic to shrimp, if you really like shrimp, eliminating is going to be a problem. You know, crab, chocolate, you know, eggs, you know, wheat products. Yeah, you're going to have a problem. You know, so if you are, if you have access to an allergist or someone that specializes in those types of things, allergies especially, you know, you may want to consider what they consider desensitization therapy, meaning that instead of taking it away, they gradually introduce more and more to you until your body can adjust and overcome the allergy. That's one one way to do it. I wouldn't recommend it. You know, I mean, it's probably better just to eliminate it altogether. If you're if you're one of those types of people that like to go out and eat, you know, you may want to ask the people, you know, that has these types of things in there. Now, there, there are different kinds of reactions that people get. One, they get the rashes and itching on the skin. You know, some people get swelling out of face, lips, you know, genitalia, you know, these types of things, swelling around the eyes, you know, swelling of the throat. You know, the angioedema, especially, you know, when you get swelling of the throat, that can be a real emergency. You know, and I oftentimes see this kind of problem with people that are allergic to peanuts. Peanut allergies. Man, those things are dangerous. You know, and there's so many peanut byproducts and everything, you know, you really have to be careful. And if you're a person that suffers from those types of allergies, you must have an EpiPen on your person at all times you know i remember unfortunately you know epipens have gotten to be pretty expensive and that's you know it's an economic thing we're not going to really get into it but the most important thing is the take-home message with this um problem is have an epipen it's life it's life-saving all right because there's an immediate reaction which can occur within minutes and sometimes there's a delayed reaction, which can occur anywhere from eight hours after to 72 hours after. So even after you, you may have gone out and had that dinner, may have noticed you had a little bit of sniffles, 
and two days later, all of a sudden you've broken out with this horrible rash or you're finding like your throat is closing up one, you know? We have to be mindful that, you know, these types of things, this delayed type sensitivity and it's immediate type sensitivity can occur when, you know, when we're starting to talk about, you know, these, um, you know, especially food allergies. So, I mean, like I said, the first thing to do really is just avoid it in general. Now for the biggie. <laughs> the biggie is the environmental allergies. Wow. You know, the pollen is the biggest culprit for the environmental allergies. Of course, you're gonna have molds, dust, um, animal dander from pets. Uh, man, if you have um, cockroaches, you know, they secrete a saliva that you're more allergic to than any of the sheddings that they may have. I think the saliva is actually more allergenic than anything. I didn't even realize cockroaches make saliva, but they do. The, um, you know, the environmental allergies, are, I think they're easier to control, you know, if you exercise certain practices. The first thing you got to remember you know, if you suffer from environmental allergies, is that once the symptoms start, they're hard to turn off, okay? It's hard to go back and say, you know, stop the running nose, stop the congestion, stop the sneezing, stop the itching. It's easier to try to prevent it from starting than it is to try to go, you know, turn it off. Once the system turns on, oh man, it's it's a mess. And anybody that suffers from allergies know this already. You know, if you take a look at a cell, the cell had, you know, it can be a round structure. And if you look at my fingertips, that would be considered the outside of the cell. What happens is these irritants, okay, attach themselves to, let's say my fingertips. When the irritants attach themselves to my fingertips, all right, basically it causes my fingertips to separate and the cell opens and all those chemicals inside the cell get released into the body. Whether this happens in the nasal passages, the eyes, the lungs, it can happen in anywhere in the body that these special cells exist the skin, you name it. And once those chemicals are released, oh man, we actually have to wait until they basically, the chemicals just wear themselves out, so to speak, you know? And pray that we're not re-exposing ourselves to more allergens, causing more cells to open up and release these chemicals, okay? And if you think about it, that's pretty much how a lot of the medications work. A lot of the medications that we take kind of bind or, or, or connect themselves to the fingertips so that when the allergens come, they have no place to attach themselves, therefore not allowing the cells to open up and release the chemicals. So by knowing that much, you say, well, wow, if I can take the medications that exist before I have issues with allergies, then I may kind of tie up the receptors or the fingertips and reduce my allergy response. So the best time to take allergy medicine is not after the allergy start, but before. Now, let's, let's go back a little bit further, okay? So we know that much now. Now, if I know what time 
a day the allergens or the pollen is the highest, then I may even be able to prepare in advance for this insult to my body, so to speak. And it's funny because pollen wants to be around when people are around. Okay, you know, so if you think about it, when you get up for work in the morning, the pollen is getting up for work in the morning. So the pollen counts are highest, say, between 5 in the morning and 10 in the morning. All right. This is why when you first wake up, oh, man, it hits you back. So now you have all these symptoms all day. You're, you're trying to get to work. You're sneezing. Your nose is running. You don't feel good. You're tired. You're irritable, you know, because you walk right into it, right smack into it, back. All right. And it just, it, it got you. It wants, it's waiting for you out. As soon as you walk out the door, the pollen is waiting there for you. Okay. You know, so we want to protect ourselves. All right. So if we know that this mess is outside, all right. First thing we want to do is we want to keep it outside. All right. We don't want the pollen in the house. Okay. We want to keep it outside the house. All right. So the first thing we got to do is we kind of want to limit our exposure during the high pollen times, which, you know, difficult if you got to go to work or school. OK, but the one thing you can do is do what? Close your windows. All right. Let it stay outside. Keep it out. Turn your air conditioners on. You know, allergens don't like nice, cool air. They don't like that. So nice, cool air. HEPA filters, H-E-P-A filters, okay? All right? Keep the stuff out, you know? When it comes in, it gets filtered and trapped so it doesn't, it doesn't get you, okay? All right? So all the allergens are outside now, okay? So now, all right, now the other allergens that can get you, the dust, the roaches, the pets, you know? Hey, got to try to keep that dust down to a minimum in the house. Get rid of those carpets. If you if you suffer from severe allergies, hey, get rid of the carpets. Carpets are harboring all the bad stuff. When you come in from outside, take those shoes off. Don't walk through the house in them shoes. All kind of nastiness is on the bottom of them soles. And you're walking across. If you got babies and you walk across the floor, the baby's going to crawl right on across whatever you walked in outside. Not, not good. Okay. So, you know, these types of things, keep it outside. If you got pets, you know, pet dander, man, it lives forever in cloth, in carpet, on surfaces. You know, so even if the pet's not there, you know, you can come into a house after the pet's been gone and still have an allergic reaction because the dander from the pet lingers on for a good period of time. So you want to keep these things to a minimum. Now, once again, I'm coming in. All right. I got to get what? I got to do what? I got to take my shoes off. We talked about that. I need to get out of these clothes. Okay? I got to get out of them. I need to take them, put them in the laundry. I need to go to the restroom. I need to wash, well, for me, wash my head, but you got to wash your hair. Get that stuff out of your hair. You know, wash down. Soap and water. Simple. A shower. Bath, whatever you want to do. All right? I got to wash the things that I've come, I've been exposed to on the outside before I do what? Sit on my furniture, lay in my bed, sit in my chairs. Because what happens? If I come in from outside and I sit back on my couch, then every or lay down on my couch, and everything that's on me is going to be on my couch. If I'm tired and I go lay down in my bed, 
and all the stuff in my hair and on my skin is going to be on my linens. Correct? All right. No. We want to scrub it all off first. Get it out of there. Okay? All right? Your linens, you know, I know this is crazy, but you'd be surprised at how infrequently people wash their bed sheets and blankets. You know, now we, we're gonna, if you got allergies, you need to be having these things washed minimally once a week with hot water. All right. The, you know, you need to, these things don't like the heat. So we need to wash them, you know, at least once a week to try to get rid of all the stuff that's in our, in our, you know, that, that could possibly be in our linens and we need to find special, what they call non-permeable um, pillowcases. Uh, they make uh, special mattresses that that don't harbor mites, you know, and these are the things you need to look for, anti-allergenic pillows, pillowcases, and mattresses that kind of keep these things away from us. Because if if I lay down in the bed, then what's going to happen? I'm sleeping with the allergies. And once again, you know, I'm irritating those cell endings and I'm constantly releasing chemicals into my body, all right, which means my body will never get a break from the allergies. It means I'm always going to have a rash. I'm always going to have welts. I'm always going to be stuffy. I'm always going to be sneezing. I'm always going to be coughing. My asthma it's always going to act up. You know, it just seems like you're just never going to get a break. Okay? You have to practice these types of things in order to get control over the symptoms. Okay? If I'm going to take allergy medicine, all right, after I take my shower, you know, I got my clean linen on the bed, all right, I got my hair washed, I'm out of my clothes. I'm gonna take my allergy medicine in the evenings, okay, just in case it makes me drowsy, I can go to sleep, all right? But more importantly, the allergy medicine is doing what? It's breaking down, and it's binding to my fingertips or to the receptors on the cells so that, you know, when I wake up in the morning and I go out that door, I'm rushing out that door to get to work or school on time, when that pollen says, ah, gotcha, all right? You already got your defenses in place. All right. So the medicine can be like, no, no, back away, back away. We're not opening up. We're not opening up. We're staying closed. All right. Now, there's going to be some times where a little bit might get through. All right? But the thing is, is that if we're getting an allergic reaction, it's not that we're not getting a bad one. So it should be a lot milder. Okay. They have nasal sprays out there. They got eye drops, all right? All those things are designed to do is the same thing I'm saying to you. They all bind, they all tie up the fingertips, all right? Because you have these cells in the nose, you got them in the eyes, you got them everywhere, all right? So if I, if I put the medicine on there, okay, then that'll help do what? Prevent that cell from opening up and letting all those chemicals out there. That's what gets you, okay? Now, you know, we talked about, you know, prevention, all right? The use of medications, antihistamines, you know, you got allergies, keep a bottle of Benadryl in the car. You never know when it could actually make a real difference for you if you just happen to be out and get bombarded and hit with a lot of allergies. But remember, when you take certain medications, especially, matter of fact, let's just make it easy. When you take allergy medicine, these tablets, Zyrtec, Claritin, Lorata, you know, Loratadine, you know, any of them, Atarax, you know, let's just say don't drop. All right. Why? Because there can be some sedative properties associated with it. I mean, it's going to make you sleepy. All right, they got active fed and soothe fed and all these things. They, they all say non-drowsy, Tylenol, sinus, all these things. They all say non-drowsy. 
you know, I take a Tylenol sinus. What if you forget to take the, the daytime and absolutely take the nighttime? And guess what's going to happen? You're going to sleep. All right? I mean, it happens. You take a little Benadryl thing. I, say, I can take one because I'm itchy. You might take a nap. You don't want to be behind the wheel of an automobile. And please, by all means, don't wash it down with a glass of scotch or a cold beer. Let's not do that. All right. That's just going to make it worse. All right. A simple glass of water will do. You know, I say these, these things seem like they're common sense, don't they? You know, if I take some allergy medicine, don't, don't wash it down with a rum and coke. You know, you'd be surprised what people will do. They surprise you. You know, they'll surprise you every single time. All right. You, you, you want to, you know, let's, let's do this the right way. Let's do this the safe way. Okay. Now, other things that you need to make sure if you have histories of, of asthma, all right, make sure you got your inhalers. Okay. Albuterol, Preventil, you know, those are the most common ones. Those are called your rescue inhalers for a reason. All right. So that when you find yourself wheezing, two pups should help to stop the wheezing. Okay, so that you can breathe a little bit better. But remember this, okay? Remember this, is that albuterol is good for taking care of what? That immediate response, that one that happens within the first couple of minutes. But the problem with allergies, the dangerous part, is what happens eight to 72 hours later when you think you're out of the woods. All right, because that's when those chemicals that are released, okay, cause a lot of inflammation. And that inflammation that it causes on the inside, especially in the airways and in the lungs, slows it down. Okay, all right. If that closes down on you, ooh, you're in a lot of trouble. Okay, because all of a sudden you're going to find yourself not being able to breathe. All right. And that's why we give people steroids. Okay. Whether it be things like prednisone, cyamedrol, medrol, what have you, or they have the, the, the steroid inhalers, palmacort, asthma cord, you know, fine. You take those one puff twice a day. Okay, and the reason why you take those one puffs twice a day is it, it helps to prevent that delayed inflammatory response, okay, that can cause a real medical emergency, all right? So a lot of people just understanding why you have the two inhalers, the albuterol, the rescue inhaler, all right, you should keep that everywhere you go. If you should have one in your pocket, one in your pocketbook, one in your car, you know, one in your bathroom, you know, anywhere, one in your desk drawer, one in your locker, one in your gym bag, all right? And, you know, when you run out, you get more, all right? Because you never know, all right, when you're going to get hit with that allergy, all right? The steroid inhaler, if you can keep one of those with the ad with with the, with the rescue inhaler, perfect. All right, because that'll take care of the delayed reaction. But the one thing is, is that you know you get the immediate reaction taken care of, and as soon as you can, you get the other one in your system, so that you don't have that that medical emergency on your hand down the road. That's you know the worst thing that could possibly ever happen. When you get a chance if you find that, you know, things are just a little bit too overwhelming for you. You know, there is help available. We call it the sensitization therapy. You can get, they have special tests that they can do to test to see what you're allergic to. They do these pinprick tests on the skin. They can check your blood to see what kind of antibodies you have to certain allergens. 
And what the what the what the doctors will do then is they'll make these special vaccines. All right. And you'll go to the office every week and you might get a shot. All right. What they're doing is they're giving you a little bit of the things that you're really allergic to. A little bit at a time, allowing your body to do what? Adjust to it so that it doesn't cause that release of these chemical mediators when you get exposed. So in essence, the desensitization therapy or immunotherapy or whatever you want to call it, okay? That's pretty much it there. Um, was, is designed to help reverse the allergy process. So there's always something available to you to help lessen the allergic response. Now, the fun part, okay, is actually, you know, all right, some people don't like medicine, so to speak. Everybody want to do it naturally, okay? Well, I mean, I think the best thing is, is that when you have um, the sensitization therapy, it's probably the most, one of the most natural things you can do because we're just giving you the antigen or the allergen that let your body do the work, okay? But for those people that like herbal things, you know, there are a list of, there are a list of um, foods that you can, I guess, combine to make juices um, to help, you know, strengthen the immune system. Carrots, okay? Pineapple, green apples, um, ginger, turmeric, grapefruits, and lettuce, of all things. How about that? You know, if you want to combine some of these things, all right, it can help, you know, turmeric, um, ginger, um, cinnamon stick, okay, maybe... Um, some lime or grapefruit, you know, wonderful for people that seem to accumulate a lot of mucus in their in their in their respiratory system. It helps to clear that out. Okay. Especially if you're constantly coughing up, you know, you know coughing up that yucky stuff, so to speak. You know? Um, you know, you can make a nice carrot and green apple, you know, a little ginger. You can you can, you can kind of Mix and match it to your taste and to what actually makes you feel better. Maybe a cup of juice, you know, a glass of juice a day. You may find works wonders. You know, during COVID, you know, I did the orange, lemon, lime, turmeric, ginger, um, cinnamon stick, you know, and garlic drink every night and add a little bit of honey, you know, make it more palatable for me anyway, because, you know, turmeric and ginger and that garlic, well, <laughs> just bitter, you know, so the, you know, with the, um, the honey, it kind of, it kind of makes it a little bit more, more edible, so to speak, but it does, but it works wonders, you know, it, it, it strengthens the immune system. It helps keep, you know, just a lot of these things in check for you. So I just want, I just need you to remember the biggest component or the biggest thing in controlling the allergies is prevention, prevention, prevention. What we talked about in the middle of the program today, all right, just eliminating those things that, you know, can harbor all those things that are irritating, keeping the culprit outside. Don't let it in, keep it out. And when you go outside, making sure you got your defenses ready so that when you go into work and you're going to school, you're not overwhelming your immune system. So you have to end up taking a day off or sitting at work suffering all day long with 
boxes of Kleenex and nasal sprays and all that just to be able to function. All right. Remember, the best time to take your medicines, if you have medication, is before the symptoms start, not after they start. All right. Because you're not going to be able to turn it off until when the chemicals themselves basically wear out. So the key is don't let them don't let them out. Keep those chemicals bottled up in the cells inside your body. All right. Because they exist everywhere. They're, like I said, they're in your nasal passages, your mouth, your eyes, you know, your skin, everything that could potentially come in contact with these allergic things that are that exist. All right. For foods, once again, if it bothers you, don't eat it. All right. Plain and simple. All right. Outside of that, you know, once again, these things here. Your worst enemy. Keep them clean. Nothing wrong. You can wash your hands as many times as you have to. Keep them clean. All right. Don't touch things and then go to eat something because whatever you're touching, you're putting it inside your body. You're, you're self inoculating. Don't touch things and pick your nose or rub your eyes. You know, you're self inoculating yourself. All right. Which is going to do what? Gonna cause the body to do what? Release those things. All right, that you just don't want. Okay. So with that in mind, all right. We also we talked a little bit also about the herbal things or natural things to help with the uh, the healing. Now here's the thing. I like the natural, you know, healing regimens, right? The, there are a lot of, there's a lot of hearsay or a lot of uh, people say, hey, this works, that doesn't work, or this works, we don't know, all right? Because, you know, that's the one thing is that there are not a lot of studies, okay? That are that are out there, okay. To tell us that these things are beneficial. I'm telling you that these things are beneficial because these are things that I've used personally that have helped me. So I'm sharing it with you. All right, and I need people to give me feedback as well. So if you see my program on Facebook and you're 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 trying some of these um, natural remedies, and they say, "Hey, doc, you know, or hey, Kev, you know, I'm trying the turmeric and the ginger, you know, and a little bit of cloves, and my allergy symptoms are getting better." All right, that's important because I'm like, "All right, let's keep sharing this with people because not only will it help you or me." It may help thousands of other people. Okay. I mean, nothing wrong with, you know, sharing information with other people, especially, you know, for things that things that we're that we're sharing are are safe. Don't require a prescription, don't really prescribe, you know, require a lot of monitoring, you know. Now, if you have other issues like blood pressure or diabetes and you're using herbal remedies or you're using um, natural, you know, natural things, still stay with your docs, all right, so that they can continue to monitor you and let them, okay, wean you off the medications if you're finding that your the other methods are working better for you. Let them wean you off the medication. Just don't stop. Let them gradually take you off. All right. And then you can maintain yourself with preventative measures and alternative therapies. Okay. So we want to we want to do this safely. All right. So when I see something that may help, you know, we can share it with one another. You know, I saw, you know. Looking at um, one of the docs uh, or Dr. Sebi was talking about one of the formulas that he used to help cure a lot of illnesses. And he, the basic ingredient 
was a gallon of water. A gallon of water a day. It's like, wow. You know? And then he used things like cloves and garlic and marrick and all those things, you know, which are all basically antioxidants. But the main ingredient to everything he did was water and avoidance, avoidance of white sugar, avoidance of brown sugar, avoidance of processed foods, avoidance of pretty much flesh, chickens, fishes, beefs, pork, no meat, okay? Uh, appear, you know, seedless fruits, you know, he avoid, avoided fruits that had no seeds. And, you know, so he promoted these things. But the thing is, is that, okay, he's pushing these things or he, he promoted these things. But the thing is, is that if people are going to do this, let's get feedback from you, all right, so that we know that, you know, this stuff is really helping and you know, we, we, I would like to hear your personal testimonies on how these things are working for you. You know, with that in mind, all right, um, once again, I, I just want everyone to be safe. Um, be blessed. All right. God loves you. I love you, you know, and I will be back again on the air next week. We'll chat some more. Take care.